than to take one of those computer kids, because they, they just don't know anything. One of them, certified, smart, straight-A student, went to the best universities. I said, well, we want to move this heater over here. And it was a heater with a stovepipe, diesel or diesel or a, a kerosene heater. That's the kind of heaters that we use in Jordan. It drips, and it's a tin heater, and it, it makes a great deal of heat. There's nothing like a good old fire to warm up a place. And so it, a fire is going in the heater, and the stovepipe is over here. And so what does he do? He goes over to it, and he grabs the, you know, starts grabbing the heater, and he's going to move it, and, you know, the... the idea of cause and effect, you know, here's a straight-A student, you know, a brilliant computer shopper, you know, he can buy anything, you know, get it delivered to his door. And what does he want to do? He wants to move the heater without t turning it off, without realizing that it has a smokestack with, that's filled with smoke <laughs> attached to it. You know, how far is it going to be moved? Well, let's see. And so people are getting dumber, and the reason is because they have one-dimensional experience. And this is why we encourage people who have kids also, and we, you know, the people we we do have kids too. Don't let them be in an ivory tower setting; otherwise, they won't have any sense. It's not a problem here, but this is just one of the bad points of this continuous education. DVDs, television, movies corrupt their akhlaq. Computer games corrupt their minds. And she talks about the reasons, the physiological reasons. It damages the very structure of the brain. They can't think. They can't think because they're used to uh, they're, they're, they're used to just reacting to these games in a very simple way. The, the games are very simple. Anybody can understand what's going on in two seconds. And there's no complexity. And there's no layers of. Uh, it's, it's called neuroplasticity. In case there's anybody that snuck in to hear from the neurosurgeons. <laughs> It's called neuroplasticity, and it means that the brain changes its form depending on what sort of occupations you give it to do. Somebody that memorizes a lot, well, Suyuti, for example, one of the people in our tariqa, and like him was, uh, was uh, Hafiz uh, al Mundari, Abdul Adim al Mundari, and like him was the Hafiz of Hadith also, uh, Subki. Each of these people memorized 100,000 hadiths from the Prophet ﷺ with their chains of transmission. Well, that's ridiculous. That's impossible. How can they possibly do such a thing? They had probably a good gene or two for memory, but they also practiced. And so the person who practices something, they, and, and similar, the person who doesn't practice anything, you have the famous story of the Yale uh, crew team who were made to have bed rest. They were put into bed for three weeks in Yale University. Crew, if you don't know what it is, it's when you get in a little boat and you have a bunch of people manning oars, and they can make the oars go very fast along the water, or the, the boat go very fast along the, the, uh, the water. They have races, another meaningless sport. But they have races, and so they're in very good shape because to pull an oar, it takes a lot of everything. It takes every muscle in the body, thighs and arms, everything. You have to have everything. They took these top athletes, people who could really put out everything, and they put them in bed for three weeks, and then they measured all of their uh, physiological indices. And what did they find? They find that every one of them had aged an equivalent of 10 years. Everything was worse from bed rest. They didn't let them get up and they didn't let them do anything except go to the bathroom. And they served them the food where they were eating. And so they, everything was worse. And similarly, the brain has plasticity. In other words, it's uh, malleable, it's changeable. And the form itself changes. Set your kids in front of computer games all the time, and their brains will change into something that's too simple to solve basic problems. And the same thing with virtual reality of all sorts. So a computer, what is it good for? A computer is good for a lot of things. It's good for all sorts of donkey work. But for children, it's not good for learning. One of the top computer specialists in the world, uh, Clifford Stoll, our computer security uh, experts, he wrote a book called Silicon Snake Oil, in which he examined all of the things for touting new educational programs. Teach your child through computers. 
oh boy. And people like the Arabs, especially, and probably people here are also hypnotized by such slogans and say, oh boy, let's do it. Computer, it has lights and it has sounds and it goes boing and it does this in the programs. And they found that these computer programs are not half as good or a tenth as good as a living teacher who's smart and who deals with the kids and who can teach them and see what there is to teach them. Living teachers that know and that are good teachers are a hundred times more effective than computers in teaching anything. And so the computer is something that someone who has something to give can give with. And they're good for other purposes, but we don't use the internet for things except unless it has some benefit. We always, the Sufi is someone who looks at the benefit of something. If it doesn't have any benefit, the daily paper, look at the daily paper and read all the articles in it. Make a survey of the daily paper. Return to it after two weeks and make a check beside each article that changed your life for the better. And you'll understand by your own experiment the benefit of the daily paper. <laughs> so some things are better than others. What are the best forms of news? The best forms of news are books that are written by people who have spent 20 years, 30 years in the area and know it perfectly and are writing about their subject. Books are 100 times better than magazines. Magazines are better than newspapers. Newspapers are better than television and radio. Each one is dumber than the one before it. Each one is worse. And everybody knows this. So anyway, these are somewhat unrelated topics, but pictures the Prophet ﷺ and the Lord of the Prophet ﷺ only forbid them because there is detriment in them. And so they should not be used except to prevent a detriment. This is the curing a disgusting disease by a medicine that is nejis, as the Fukuha say. And so this is the only time they should be used is to prevent detriment. And this, yes, it includes DVDs. Well, the children aren't Morids. Can they watch television? No. Don't get them used to it. Read to them. Improve their minds. Read to them. SubhanAllah, the difference between a book, the difference between a child who can read a book in two or three hours. My brother used to write movie screen, movie screenplays. My older brother lived in Hollywood. And how much in a two and a half hour feature film, how much dialogue is there? There's 120 pages of dialogue, average, he says. 120 pages is a, is, a, is a zero as a book. There's nothing there. Look how much richer a book is than, than a two-hour feature-length film. What a difference. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, He gave us a body, He gave us a mind, He gave us a ruh, in order that we can thank Him for it. And what is thanks consistent? What is gratitude consistent? Consists in using things for that which for, the, for which they were created. نسأل الله التوفيق والتيسير والحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله تعالى ونس also one last thing إن شاء الله تعالى what wasting time of any sort it's not something that the Muri does talking way into the night with one's buddies where is the tahajjud where is the rising and telling Allah thanks for all of these blessings why do blessings leave people he was rich and now he's poor. He had good health and now he has bad poor health because he didn't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he had that blessing. Yeah. He who is ungrateful for blessings has made himself liable to lose them. And he who thanks them has tied them up with their true tethers. Two ties. When this law told people to say, Inshallah, we'll praise Allah to the Lord. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, I don't know what So here's your pop quiz, Inshallah Ta'ala, about your wara, about your scrupulousness in the deen. It should be enough that there's one hadith, there's 20, all of them sahih. And so this is something, and we've talked about the detriment to society and the detriment to minds and the detriment to people, subhanAllah.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained it on the tongue of the Messenger, and this is enough for us. Nasallahu wa tawfiq wa tasir. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sirul Fatiha.